number 398, I invite the congregation to stand as we sing. Hallelujah! Christ is risen.
us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. During the night, (coughs) Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia, pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to a woman who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth. You are saving help among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Revelation. In the spirit, the angel carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring in, into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, 
nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as a crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no light of sun or of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. I invite the people to stand and sing hymn 510, verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord our Christ. Jesus, says, <clears throat> Jesus said to Judas, not Iscariot, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them. And he will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me and does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I said, have said to you. Peace I leave, you, I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <coughs> so I love that John clarifies which Judas Jesus is talking to. <laughs> Doesn't want to have any confusion, not Iscariot. So it's the son of James, Judas, son of James. Um, if you know 
Judas, Simon, and James. You know, half of the names of all the disciples, because <laughs> there's two <laughs> Judases, two Simons, and two Jameses. Um, so yeah, he clear, clarifies. He's like, yeah, I'm not talking to that one, <laughs> that one Judas. We're talking to the other one, the one that we like. Um, and Jesus is talking to him, saying, I'm going to leave, but you're going to get the Holy Spirit. And they're like, oh, great. What's the Holy Spirit? <laughs> so we're going to start talking in tongues. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is an area where the Episcopal Church does sometimes get a little nervous, the idea of the Holy Spirit. Um, we feel like that's a little pentecostal That's a little, uh, a little too much. It's a little uh, letting down, not being dignified, and jumping around maybe, saying things that are weird, believing that Jesus is actually going to do something. Um, I think the Holy Spirit's amazing. I think it's really fun. I think it's one of the gifts that, if it wasn't a gift, Jesus would not have bothered to talk to Judas, not Iscariot. Um, <laughs> he wouldn't have brought it up, but he does. He says, I'm gonna, this is going to happen, and the Holy Spirit is going to help you to understand things, and the Holy Spirit is going to help you to do things when I'm not here. And, and the disciples are like, that's great but they're not going to understand it until we get to Pentecost. So Pentecost happens. The Holy Spirit comes. The disciples are now empowered with the Holy Spirit. Then there's this other guy, Paul, right? (laughs) He comes in later. He's not one of the original 12. Um, He winds up with the Holy Spirit too. And then he gets in our reading today, in um, in the Acts reading, he has a vision. So he has a dream. Now, this is when the Holy Spirit comes in, I think. Because it's that Holy Spirit teaches you, helps you to understand things. So he doesn't wake up and he's like, guys, I had this dream. I need a Corvette. Like, <laughs> I was driving, my hair was flowing, it was amazing. I think God's speaking to me. No, he, he doesn't wake up and say that. He says, guys, I, I had this dream that there was this, this person and he was calling to me and he's saying like, Come, come tell us about Jesus. Tell us about this good news. Tell us what's going on. Like, come explain to us. I think we need to go to Macedonia. And his friends are like, sounds, sounds good. Let's do that. So they go. They go on a trip. Now, the Holy Spirit, I believe, talked to him in a dream. This is something that any of us are capable of doing. I believe most of us probably sleep at least once a day. If you don't, you need to see a doctor. Um, But when you're asleep, it's a time where your body is able to relax. It's able to rejuvenate itself. It's able to get the rest that your body needs to be able to go and do the things that you're going to do the next day. It's also a time where your brain processes things that happened the previous day previous year, previous more than one year. Um, And sometimes in that processing, I believe God is able to work using the Holy Spirit to speak to us in a time where you're not, you can't block it. You You can't ignore it. Now, I'm not saying every dream you have is from the Holy Spirit. I've had a few, not from the Holy Spirit. But I am saying he can speak to us in dreams. And that it's important to wake up and think about what you dreamed. If you have a dream and you felt like you're supposed to do something, I think if it's helpful, it's probably possibly from the Holy Spirit. I think if it's not helpful for others, it might not be from the Holy Spirit. Um, But this is where discernment would come in. This is where I think, just like Paul tells the dream to some other people, and they're like, yeah, we should go do that. You should talk to someone else about the dream. Now, if you're waking up and you're going, yeah, I was walking through uh, this field, but it wasn't a field, it was marshmallows. <laughs> Your friend's probably going to be like, yeah, that's, that's weird. <laughs> but if you're like, I, don't, I just don't get it. Um, I was at the store, and I felt like I was supposed to talk to this person. Maybe you're being encouraged to do something. I don't know, but I do know God can do it. And that, that, to me, is one of the beautiful ways that the Holy Spirit can speak to us that, 
and the Holy Spirit can act in our lives, that's not scary, <laughs> like speaking in tongues or going over and pronouncing a healing over someone if you don't actually believe God has called you to do that. But be open to dreams and what God is calling you to do. Because of that, we wind up having them, they go to this place, they wind up in a town, they wind up meeting this lady named Lydia. She hears about the gospel because they went. They go out and they're in the town and they're like, how do we find some people that believe in God? So they decide to go down to the river. In this time frame, uh, Jews would set up synagogues or places of prayer close to rivers if they're away from the temple. Uh, that's because part of their worship and part of their rituals were, um, they would do uh, cleansing rituals. So washing yourself, um, getting your hands clean, you needed running water. Eventually, Christians wind up taking over this practice as well and setting up places of prayer. If you didn't have a church or if you didn't have a uh, synagogue that you could worship with, they'd set up near rivers because baptism. <laughs> Again, running water is helpful. So when uh, Paul and his friends go down to the river, they're not just going for a picnic. It's similar to if, in, if you're ever in a southern town and you go into the downtown area, you're going to find a church, or ten, um, because that's where they are in southern towns. They go to the river because they know that's where you will find people who are open to talking about God. So they go, they do that. Lydia gets baptized, and after she gets baptized, she feels called into this action. And she, I believe, feels led by the Holy Spirit to do something. She goes, uh... I have a house, <laughs> it's got an extra room, y'all, uh, you're sleeping outside, do you want to come <laughs> like, have a place to live? I can make that happen. And they're like, yeah. And I love that, let's see, what, the way it describes it. Um, <laughs> and she prevailed upon us. <laughs> like, <laughs> so they're like, no, no, we were good. She's like, no, you're coming to my house, okay. <laughs> like, so... She shares her home, which makes it so that more and more people are able to hear the gospel. The Holy Spirit can act on you and say, what do you have? How can you share that in a way that shares the gospel? She shares the gospel by sharing her house. It's another way. And then finally we get to Revelation, and we have the city of God. Now this time, there's water again. There's another river, but... No one, they're, they're not going to the river to worship. The river's flowing out from the throne of God. Uh, I, I believe it's imagery of how God's love, how God's uh, spirit flows out. Uh, the image of water is something that is kinda, can be lost on us in America because we have water, lots of it, in most places. Uh, I can go turn a knob and water magic in my house. That was not the case throughout all of history. But it is now for us. But societies are based off of water. Societies do better when there's water. And we saw that, there, um, we've all heard of the Fertile Crescent. It's a place where <laughs> agriculture and society succeeded because they had water. Uh, the Romans, they create these aqueducts to bring water in where they need it. Water is something that usually gets brought in. It's, uh, we see it as it's life-giving, but it has to get brought in and consumed. In Revelation, God shows this image to John of the water going out. So rather than the city having water come into it, the city has water going out from it. Now, that is what we do on Sundays. That's why we have a processional at the end of the service to go out. And we disperse into Great Falls. We disperse into uh, all the other areas that we live in, but we're sent out. And just like the river of life that's flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb, with these trees of life, 
next to them that have uh, leaves that are used for healing the nations. We are sent out, and we get to go out. These readings this week have a lot on my heart because I'm being sent out from here. You're sending me away. Well, you're not, but I'm leaving. (laughs) But I'm getting to go out from here, going down to Florida, and I get to take the, the things, the lessons, the love, the prayers that I've learned and experienced here at St. Francis and take that out. Um, there's a blessing that is attributed to St. Francis. And it is a blessing that one of my mentors, uh, probably about four, four-ish years ago, uh, he used it in a, in a service. And I was like, oh, that's really weird. Uh, and I just, just kind of let it go. I didn't think much of it after that. But then I come here, and I've been here. I've been experiencing things here and seeing things here. And this prayer, again, no one is 100% sure it's St. Francis, but it's attributed to him, is a prayer that is going to be in my heart and with me and that is being sent out from here. The prayer is, may God bless us with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that we may live deeply within your heart. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, and starvation, and war, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and turn their pain to joy. And may God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world so that we can do what others claim cannot be done. Amen. I invite the people to stand. And the Nicene Creed is found on page 350. <coughs> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. 
for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. Michael, Presiding Bishop of the Episcopal Church. Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, Bishops of the Diocese of Virginia. Isa, Bishop of Ezo. The candidates for Bishop of the Diocese of Virginia. Joe, Alan, Gideon, and Mark. For the delegates to the electing convention of the diocese for the 14th Bishop of Virginia and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Charlie, Ellie, Maria and Jeff, Rick, Dave, Cara, Rick, Driss, Bob, Bryson, Kim, Martha, Samantha, Kathy and Steve, Henri and Alice, Desiree and Laura. We pray for the House of Representatives and Senate of the United States Congress the President of the United States and his administration, the justices and judges of the federal courts, the delegates and senators of the Virginia de legislature, the governor and his administration, and the justices and judges of the Commonwealth courts, the boards of supervisors of Loudoun and Fairfax counties, we pray for the countries and peoples of Ukraine, Russia, Poland, Belarus, Iran, Syria, Ethiopia, the Tigrayans, China, Tibet, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life for the ministry of Timothy Rutherford, Amy Beowulf, and Asher among us for these past two years. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Ever living God, whose will it is that all should come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, inspire our witness to him that all may know the power of his forgiveness and the hope of his resurrection who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite you to offer to each other a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you.
So we have resumed a custom, which I love about St. Francis, which is, is blessings for anniversaries and birthdays. So are there any uh, parishioners here today who have a birthday for which we should pray, or an anniversary that we should bless? Oh, we got one. Okay. Eleanor, is this a birthday? It was a birthday. Okay. And a birthday for Barbara. Okay. Why don't you stand here with, with uh, Eleanor? Okay. And we will give a prayer. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Eleanor and Barbara, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Many happy returns of the day. Many happy returns. So, uh, I also think it's important to give a blessing uh, and a prayer. So, Timothy, would you come join? And Amy and Asher and Beowulf. It wasn't long ago that I was introducing myself to you and you were introducing yourselves to me. And we just, when you're getting ready to travel, there should be prayers for travelers. So, we have this prayer for you. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who are called to new places, in particular Timothy, Amy, Beowulf, and Asher. Surround them with your loving care. Protect them from every danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end and their new home through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the gifts of your ministries among us. And we'll, we'll continue on. <laughs> We've got a celebration plan, so make sure you go to Millen Hall, which is that big room down the hall from here. Follow the crowd. You'll, you'll find it, I promise. We're going to take communion today. We will have two stations for the wine. You are... Uh, you can take the wine, you do not have to. If you take the wine, we ask that you drink instead of intincting. And the cup will be wiped after you uh, t drink from the cup, so that's possible. You can also t receive the bread only. If you receive the bread only or the wine only, it works that you've received all of communion because that's the way it works, the real presence, and both can be taken together or separately. Um, follow the instructions of our ushers, Rob Smith and Mike Gray. They will direct you when it's time to come forward. And while we prepare the table to receive you for communion, we have uh, uh, an anthem from our, our choir as a piece to reflect upon as we prepare the table to receive you. Um, oh, and gluten-free people. Uh, we have gluten-free bread. If you put your right hand over your left hand like this when you come up, uh, we will administer that form of the host uh, while you are here. So with that, I invite you to reflect and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Great Thanksgiving begins on page 367. I invite you to stand as we begin Eucharistic Prayer B. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right it, and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper... He took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country wherewith 
Blessed Francis of Assisi and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
post-communion prayer is found on page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. Now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn number 400, All Creatures of Our God and King, verses 1, 2, and 3. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Right now, and I could.